Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the LaRue's Rugby Podcast. My name is Dan Murphy, and with me always is Derek Brissett and Stu Hardy. Um, before we get started, because we have uh, uh, fantastic guests on the show, uh, we wanted to offer our condolences to the family and friends of Nola Gold, Sean Riley, uh, who unfortunately passed away from heart complications on uh, January the 26th. Sean had an interesting path to rugby. Uh, he did not play until 2012, but, you know, like so many talented athletes, he, he quickly advanced. Uh, he played uh, professionally with Nola Gold, Nola Gold and also with the Ohio Aviators in uh, pro rugby's uh, only season. Uh, he played football at the University of Akron, uh, Notre Dame uh, College in Ohio before switching to rugby. Um, he earned the U.S. Uh, Collegiate All-American Notable Mention selection in 2014, which is a hard thing to do. Um, and we got to see him live uh, in, in Canada when uh, Sean uh, played with uh, Nola against the Arrows in the 2019 home game. And it was all clear to us uh, how, how great an athlete he was and how good of a player he was. And all you really need to do is look at Nola Gold's uh, Twitter, Instagram, and, and see how much uh, his uh, teammates loved him. So, again, we just want to offer our condolences. And I believe that um, Nola Gold has posted a Patreon or GoFundMe to support the family. So, if you can, to financially support them, it'd be great. Gentlemen, we have some exciting guests. Uh, Melanie Squire and Megan Wilson uh, from the Iroquois Roots Rugby Program have joined us, and uh, we really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time out of your your, your busy nights to uh, to join us and uh, talk rugby. We're Thanks excited to be us. here. <laughs> so uh, this is something that we always ask uh, uh, our guests when they come on, and how did you guys get started in rugby? Um, we find that in Canada, it's such a, a unique journey to get to rugby and and how did you guys kind of start your your time in it that so would be Meg. Uh, <laughs> my brother is two years older than me and he started playing rugby at Brantford Collegiate Institute um so I had a couple years of getting to watch the sport getting to learn a bit about it and then when I went into grade nine I also went to Brantford Collegiate um it's kind of bizarre but rugby is really big in Brantford it's um, we have the Brantford Harlequins, which is a, an established club there. So the Brantford Collegiate Institute program has been amazing throughout um, the years. And I got to play for that program starting in grade nine. And then from there, I got to play a little bit of Ontario. Um, and then I went on to play for the Vancouver Island Thunder, which is based on Vancouver Island. And I was lucky enough to train at Shawnigan Lake with the team. Um, from there, I got a scholarship to play at Shawnigan Lake School, which is a private boarding school on Vancouver Island. Uh, they're big sponsors of the Canadian rugby program. So I got to train and uh, meet a lot of the Canadian players at the same time, which was very, very cool. Very good experience. From Shawnigan, I went to McMaster University. I played for the varsity women's program there. Um, and we won the national championship in 2015, which was my first year at Mac, which is very interesting. Um, so yeah, rugby's taken me a lot of different places since we started, but it all stems back to my brother playing a couple of years before me, getting to watch him play. And, and how about for uh, for yourself, Mel? How did you uh, how did you end up getting involved in this game? <laughs> exact same way. My I'm Megan's mom. I don't know if everybody knows that, but I'm Megan's mom. So my older son. Darius um, played before she did, so um, my biggest role was driving them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got involved. I, I don't know about you, but my mom, like I, I have an older brother that played rugby, and that's how I got into it. Uh, did you watch the games? Because I think I can count on my hand the amount of times my my mom went to watch our games, and it was uh, very very few and far apart because she was so afraid of what would happen to us when. Really, nothing ever happened to us. Um, yeah, I watched every single game pretty much from their entire careers, from grade nine onto university, onto club. Um, I've pr pretty much been at every game. Um, I used to work at a job where I traveled extensively, um, basically throughout Ontario, but sometimes out west as well. And I would 
make sure my flight would uh, get me on time to get home for games and stuff like that. So I, I've I've watched a lot of rugby games in my time. One question that we do also kind of always add, I guess we can kind of segue into the watching a lot of rugby games in your time. Um, something like is is do you guys have any any like players, any athletes, any teams that you guys are really excited to watch every time they step on the pitch? I'll start. Um, so <laughs> when I went to McMaster University, our captain there was Cindy Nels. Uh, she's very high up in the Canadian women's program. Um, she's just one of those players that you either watching her on the field or being with the being with her on the field. Um, she's very accountable and you can count on her to do something that's going to just make everybody step back and go, wow. Um, every single time. And she's, yeah, she's always been that, that one player for me. Uh, this past year, she actually played with Canterbury in New Zealand and had a very great season there. And um, in their last game to win the championship, she scored the game winner in the 82nd minute, which was pretty cool. Pretty exciting to see. It's my humble brag in saying that I know her. <laughs> I know her too. <laughs> um, um, I always answer this pretty much the same because um, I love watching Gislaine Landry. Um, anytime the Canadian women sevens are playing on TV or streaming, I definitely watch it uh, no matter what time of day or night it is. Um, I always watch her play. Um, she's a powerhouse and she actually is very supportive of our program. And one day I opened Twitter and I had a DM from her just saying that she loves what we're doing and how could she help and could she send us some kit? And she, she does that now con consistently every year. She takes time out of her crazy schedule and she's like, Hey, I have some stuff to send. I'm going to uh, hook it up. You can pick it up in Toronto. So, um, not only is she pretty much the best women sevens player in the world, um, she supports what we're doing and she's an amazing role model off the pitch as well. You know, so obviously in that answer there, you did kind of mention the program. So I guess that's a good time to just kind of segue right into everything that is the Iroquois roots. So why don't we just start off with you guys just kind of giving an overview of what exactly the program is, what you guys do, how long it's been running for. Um, and, you know, we can just uh, take the conversation from there after. Do you want to start, Meg? Sure. So we started this program in 2017. Uh, we had our first intro camp. We do a lot of intro to rugby grassroots stuff. Um, that first camp, I think we had 10 kids come out. They were all between the ages of uh, like four and six, which was pretty interesting. Not really what we expected, but um, it was fun nonetheless. We did have a couple of high school students come out um, and it was just fun for them to be around and see we had um, yeah, I think two or three high school students come out from there. We did, um, a girls program, which was all indoor in the winter time. We had a couple of the arrows guys come out. We had Tom Van Horn come out and coach, um, a session with them, which was great. And with that session, we did both on field and off field stuff, which was a lot of fun, different aspect to the sport. Um, and then this past year we were able to actually field uh, U18 boys and girls teams. So we entered into two tournaments. Uh, we did the Great North Sevens. Great North Sevens. It used to be Mag Sevens. Now it's Great North Sevens. And we also did the one at Brantford, the Q-Meta Cup. Um, it was our first time kind of competing. We do base a lot of our programming off of intro to rugby, very grassroots skills. So this is something that um, we were definitely interested in doing, but we weren't quite prepared to do. Um, but it was a great experience overall. It was really nice. We had the kids from early spring to basically the next year at the exact same time. So watching their development uh, rugby skill-wise and rugby knowledge-wise was, was really interesting for both of us to see. We never really expected to do that. So that was kind of nice for us. Um, so the other component, well, the main actually component of our program is introducing rugby in the First Nations communities in Ontario. Um, there's 133 First Nations in Ontario, which is a lot, um, but Ontario is huge. Um, so 
we actually travel into the First Nation communities. Um, we have uh, rec leaders within the community there that um, help us to set up the camps. Um, so basically they'll put the posters out in their community and they'll do the registration and intake of, of the participants and we'll just kind of roll in that day of our camp and set up and everything's pretty much ready to go. Um, probably the fav my most favorite part of what we do because we get to, we first of all, we get to go into different communities other than our own. And so we learn about um, their nation and, and stuff about them as well. So it's, it's, it's like a cultural exchange pretty much. Um, yeah, and then Megan does, Megan will do the actual rugby camp. Um, sometimes they don't have facilities in the community, um, like a gym or even a sports field. So um, one that comes to mind is Curve Lake First Nation. We went there and they, they have a baseball diamond. So we used the outfield and we did our camp there and we had a ton of fun there. It was so much fun. Um, so Megan takes care of that part and whichever coach volunteers to come with her will, will take care of that portion. Um, and then I take care of the cultural arts um, workshop portion. Um, we have about five different workshops now in our program and they can decide based on the age of the participants, um, which uh, cultural art they would like to do that day. And I bring that and I facilitate and deliver that portion, which I love to do because I'm a I love doing crafts and I love just speaking about um, the tra our traditions and our culture and stuff like that. So that's how our camps are run. So um, we can't wait to, to start doing that part again. Like that's, we've got a lot of new things coming for our camps as well, since we had all this downtime. Obviously we have new um, workshops to deliver, new fun, really fun games that we're gonna be able to do with the kids. And so, we can't wait to get back to that part. I, I live in a, a Peterborough, so I, oh. I have some students. Uh, my my full time job is I work at uh, one of the elementary schools, and I have some students that come in from Curve Lake. And I remember mm. uh, I, I brought out like a, a rugby ball for for recess, and then one of the kids came up to me and says, "Like, I remember like someone was playing with those like at the our ball diamond, <laughs> like pointing at the ball." I'm like. Oh, like, cool. And like, this is before I think I knew a whole lot about your program. And then like, now I'm like slowly like putting two and two together about like, Oh, that was you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> How That's awesome that they remember it then. Yeah. I, I, I don't even think honestly that they were there. I think they probably like drove by on a bike or like drove oh, by with their parents oh, and saw you guys playing dry, driving by and we we're like, Hey, come and join us. But they didn't, <laughs> but yeah, definitely there was. It sounds like who I'm thinking of. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so like when you guys have like these kids that are joining the program, is this like, is it kind of like also like their introduction to rugby or are you getting people that, you know, have some experience with the game beforehand as well? I would say it's, it's mostly introduction to rugby. A lot of them haven't played it before. I know a lot of them are coming from Caledonia, which is just a, away from the reserve and their high school doesn't offer rugby there. So a lot of them have heard it and seen it play at other schools or their friends at other schools can play them, but a lot of them don't have the opportunity to play it themselves. Um, when we travel, we do get the odd high school student that does play, but for the most part, it's mostly introduction. Do you guys find it like, is it, has it been a bit of a challenge to get kids to come out and try rugby versus like hockey or lacrosse or soccer or any of the other like, you know, big sports that are kind of available? We come from humble, humble beginnings. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> uh, we do have an amazing facility here on our reserve, um, an amazing sports field that when we asked to use at first, they were like, nope, it's strictly a lacrosse field. We're, they get it. We can't do it. So we're like, okay. So um, there's a place in Brantford called Skanata Village and it's our traditional Mohawk territory homeland. Um, and it it's obviously vast amount of land, but it's, it's not feel like 
playing field land. It's like bumpy, there's holes. So we started actually um, doing our training there. And um, I think the lowest amount of participants we had was two. (laughs) I think the highest was four though. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it was sad. It was so discouraging. (laughs) And obviously when, when no one shows up, um, then I'm playing, I've never played. I have no business probably even playing. Um, and my husband plays like whoever came with us to, to help ends up playing and practicing and making um, a training session out of it. And that's fine. Like we, we have a great time doing that, but yeah, definitely humble beginnings. And then I think when it, when the turnaround happened is when we finally did get some time on our own sports field here in our community, that meant travel was minimal. Um, carpooling was happening some kids live close enough to walk um so that's when we started getting numbers out and it was like thank god because i know i i could see megan a couple times in 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 the beginning getting pretty discouraged like how am i supposed to run a session um with no people but like we kept on plugging away at it like you have to do um when you want to grow a sport from the ground up so so thankfully um, thankfully we did have that turnaround, but we, we come from very humble beginnings, definitely. So with a program such as this, which, um, has the main focus of rugby, but also the cultural aspect within Ontario, what is the history of the name and the logo for Bridge Rugby? This is a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> Keep you on your toes. Um, I'll go with the name and then Mel can describe the logo. There's a lot to describe in the logo. Um, Which I'll, I'll move but, my head so people can kind of get a good look <laughs> at it. Um, so the name, we are both Iroquois. It's a matrilineal system. So you go off of what your mom is. So um, under Iroquois, there's six different nations and we're Mohawk. Um, so that's where that comes from. And then we kind of plugged away at a lot of different options and we didn't want to go with anything kind of stereotypical. We really wanted to honor where we were coming from and what we were doing. And um, you also want something that's going to flow right and sound right and look good. And so we plugged away at a couple of different things and we couldn't figure it out. And then it kind of just slipped. We just said roots. And then we were like, why didn't we think of that before? Like roots fits very well. It's where Iroquois is our roots. It makes a lot of sense. So um, that's where the name comes from. And then the logo is kind of derived off of that. Um, So our logo has so much meaning within that little rugby ball that you see. Um, First, you can see the tree of peace in the center. Um, And you'll notice the roots. There there are four, four roots that go in each direction north west east south um and the tree of peace what it is is um there was a time when the haudenosaunee people or the iroquois um were warring and fighting amongst each other and and things were not going well um and a message of peace was brought to our people and the Mohawk people were the first to accept this great love peace um, and then spread it to the other nations as well. So from that day, and, and people actually um, have a date in time that this happened. And I think it was in the year 1120 that this happened when the peacemakers came and, and gave us um, the law of peace that we accepted um, so that's what that tree is symbolic of. Usually when you see um, an artist rendering of the tree of peace, you'll notice that there's actual weapons buried under under the roots. That means like we've buried buried our weapons and we have, have accepted this great law of peace. And we still live by that, that law of peace today in our society. So that's what that is. So that's a very symbolic, it goes with the root um, in our name. And atop of the tree of peace always sits an eagle and because he can see for miles and miles um, 
he's he's there to protect us and and warn us if if he sees any trouble coming so um it's always important um for that eagle to be sitting on top so you'll see him there and um coming from the ball you'll see those those purple and white lines and it looks like the ball's in motion but what that actually is is um a wampum belt it's called the two row wampum so um it it was an agreement between the mohawk and the dutch people i think i want to say in the year 1620 maybe something like that um it was just an agreement like um we'll stay in our canoe and we'll travel forward and you'll stay in your ship and you'll travel forward and we'll travel forward together, but we won't, um, you know, I, we won't get into each other's business type of thing. Like we'll live harmoniously together. Um, but our business is ours and yours is yours and, and we won't sort of intermingle that way. So that's that wampum belt there. So that's very, very important to us as well. Um, and it's something that we live by today, still today. So that's the meaning in that. And it's all encased in a rugby ball. So that's pretty cool. When you guys kind of described how the program worked, you talked a lot about how um, you guys were looking to go into these uh, Indigenous communities all throughout Ontario. What do you think that rugby, c- the sport can bring to these communities that, that perhaps other sports might not? Or what is something that you think a, a sport like rugby can bring well we um, always say <laughs> you go don't, ahead, you don't. <laughs> no you're the rugby girl um so yeah growing up I played rugby and it was the only sport that I really can com- like played competitively and outside of school and it was the only sport that I really latched on to and it's just like the atmosphere of rugby it's the inclusivity of it it's um the camaraderie of it it's the only sport that um your friends with your opponents kind of deal. It's just something about the atmosphere that I think rugby can really bring to a lot of Indigenous youth or just youth in general. Um, we also say that, you know, all you need is a ball and some friends and an open space. And there's a lot of that usually in, in First Nations communities. So there's not a lot of equipment that you need. Um, so and every time we visit a First Nations community, we always leave rugby balls in the community so that they're there anytime they want to play the game. Um, we actually equate ru- rugby to our um, lacrosse story. Um, within our lacrosse story, when the creator gave us the game, um, it was actually played by the animals and the birds, the very first lacrosse game. And um, we always like to tell that story because it totally equates to rugby. Um, basically, in lacrosse, it doesn't matter how big or fast or anything you are, there's, there's, that's, you, everybody has a gift, so you're important um, on the lacrosse field. Um, and we equate that to rugby because obviously there's a position in rugby for anybody no matter how big or small you are, how how fast your speed is. So um, I think it all fits together really nicely. I think the really interesting thing that, you know, you guys talk about leaving the, the rugby balls, which is a fantastic uh, gift to these communities, but it kind of motivates them to play. Like, you know, you can, you can just take a rugby ball and kick it around and throw it around and mess around with it. You know, it's getting harder and harder to go and play hockey you know, just go and pick up, yep. play a pickup game of hockey, unless it's road hockey, so, you know, so it, it is interesting how you guys are taking advantage of this. It's such an easy sport to pick up, even in the snow, yep. like, you know, yep. you can go play out rugby out in the snow if you really wanted to. Um, and I think that's really interesting. And, and just getting the kids outside and playing is such a, such a great, uh, great opportunity that you guys are uh, providing. With that as well, like who are like some of like the key people, like within the organization that have also been helping you and stuff. I know like <laughs> seen like you mentioned um, like Giselle Landry, um, you know, with some of her like social media presence and obviously, you know, helping with like coaching and stuff. I think I've seen like Phil Mack on some of your social media and stuff too. Yeah. So like, who are some like the, like of like the people, um, whether they're like really big names, like members of the national team or, you know, people that maybe a lot of rugby fans won't necessarily know, but like, who are some like the key f- people within your organization? So basically, because we haven't 
um, really been to that many First Nations and then COVID hit, um, we haven't really taken anyone uh, from the national team with us into any of the communities yet. It's just been us. Um, however, um, Ray Barkwell has been a huge um, supporter of us since we started. He's from Ontario, obviously, and um, we've met him, I don't know how many times, just through rugby. Um, so he's actually been a huge help behind the scenes and advocating for us and just helping us um, um, when we were going to take our, our kids down to Florida to play before COVID hit. Um, he helped us a lot with, you know, logistics and stuff like that. So Ray, I, I'm excited for him to come out and help us um, at, at some point. Um, recently, too, we had Brett Bukaboom who donated a bunch of kit to us and he he um reaches out to us and says that he's um ready to help whenever whenever we we're able to get back out there again so those are two that i can think of what about you meg um we've had people just like even more so behind the scenes as to like donating things um i know we mentioned just lane already donated a bunch of her kit but we've had cindy nels donate a bunch of kit um and these are a lot of people that i've played with before just in different circumstances um we have a girl who's she paints she does little paints I played with her at Mac she donates um 10 of every sale she makes to us oh awesome yeah we have um it's just different connections we've made through rugby playing rugby but um did we say Khalil at uh oh, oh the bars? Khalil oh, oh Khalil. Boy. <laughs> what He's a our guy boy. we love him <laughs> See, I, again, I, I'm a Peter guy. You know, I, I, I was involved with Trent Rugby uh, when I came here uh, to go to school. And Khalil was one of the first guys I met. And what an absolute gem of a person. <laughs> a little insane. I, the guy, if, if anyone's ever like looking for a guy that, that gives his heart and soul to rugby, whether it be, you know, sitting in a laundry mat, cleaning kits from the sevens tournaments he's done, Khalil's Khalil's there. He's he's a great guy. Yeah, Khalil's been there for Dude, us since yeah. yeah, since forever. He got us into Great North Sevens. Obviously, that's his tournament. Um, he's always putting together kit from every athlete he knows to donate mm -hmm. to us. Um, yeah, Khalil's done a lot. If we have any question at any time of the day, we ask Khalil. So yeah. <laughs> shout and out to him. He answers us, which is crazy. Like it doesn't matter what time. I'm like, hey. He's like, what do you need? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, we've been no. We've been pretty fortunate to make a lot of different connections through rugby in general. You guys kind of did touch on something a little bit there when you were mentioning like Ray Barkwell, I guess helping with some of the logistics stuff um for going down to Florida, which unfortunately, due to the world shutting down, um, did not happen. <laughs> um, so like do you guys like how hard, I guess, maybe it's a bit of a twofold question here, but like how, like, I mean, I don't really want to say that, like, if, like, obviously it'd be disappointing, but it's like, do you guys have any other like tours lined up going forward or uh, like, are you planning on obviously taking those tours out <laughs> later as well? And I'm assuming you guys are all laughing at the way that Dan just changed the background <laughs> yeah. right now. Cause this I feel like beautiful. Kind of funny. it's clear. Right oh here. God. I have a great <laughs> picture. I should put up because we Khalil actually came out um and had had lunch with us one day but yeah did a bit of a photo shoot <laughs> sorry Derek I didn't want to stop I, I didn't want to interrupt but yeah I did yeah I got to no, no. honor the man the, pe the people <laughs> listen strictly listening to the audio version of this are going to be quite confused for a moment but it's, it's fine uh it's fine. but you know outside of that though it's that's fine um but uh oh man now i gotta remember what my question was um i guess it was kind of, yes exactly it was i guess kind of like a twofold question i guess like have you guys are you guys like still working towards you know doing some more international tours um after the one in florida canceled and i guess the second part of that would be like how hard has it been to run the program during a pandemic um so um definitely um our our goal for the our u18 would be to tour internationally, um, definitely see some cool places and meet some cool people and maybe some other 
indigenous people from around the world that play rugby would be really cool to hook up with. Um, so definitely, but um, for right now, we don't have anything planned. Obviously, we don't know like when it would be anyway, but definitely we would love to get just out there and meet people. And uh, well, basically, I think a lot of people when we say we're Iroquois, or we're Haudenosaunee, um, a lot of people don't realize that we're still here. The, or have never heard of Iroquois. Well, you know, if you if you step away from Ontario or if you step into the United States, um, they'll either not even have heard of Iroquois people or realize that we're still here. So, like, it it's um, a huge goal to get out there and say, "Hey, we're still here, and and this is our culture, and this is and this is who we are." Basically, so definitely, I would love to do something like that. Um, as far as running the program during COVID, obviously it's been a huge struggle. Um, especially here, we, we live in six nations on a reserve. Um, our, a lot of people don't have Wi-Fi um, just because we don't have the infrastructure here to have Wi-Fi. Like ours is spotty at best. Like it's, it's, I never know. Like I think we went through almost a two month period of not having any Wi-Fi connection. Just we have one company that does it. It's spotty. So like that's been a struggle. Um, we obviously can't get together with our kids. So um, we've been definitely hugely busy though, behind the scenes. Um, like I said, we've been working on new aspects to our camps when they start back up. Um, we've been, we've been doing, um, online zoom cultural workshops with different groups so we've been still delivering our, our workshops online um what else have we been doing we're writing a children's book it's going very slowly but um we're, we're actually maybe getting some funding for that quite soon so that that'll speed up the process but um i don't know if you've seen on our social media the little his name is Rudy. He's a, he's a rugby playing Eagle. We use him a bit in our social yes, media. Yes, I, I have but, seen, so, yeah. so he's our main character from this book. And basically it's going to be a resource for the kids um, in the communities that we visit. It's going to be a book about Rudy just playing the game, but within, within the, the structure of the story, they'll be learning different kicks and different rules of the game of rugby, but in a fun way. So we've been working on that as well. Um, what else have we been doing, Megan? Um, we were able to hold a couple just basic skill sessions. Our sports field did open, so we were able to do that. Um, I, unfortunately, we only were able to have two out of the eight we had planned, and we couldn't do anything uh, game-specific. We had to do everything just basic personal skills. So we did a little bit of fitness. We did a little bit of conditioning. And we did some, I had a friend come in and she's really good on the speed school stuff. So she did a lot of that. Um, and we did that twice. And then basically, yeah, just, um, I've been looking into finding different resources of different things that I can coach while I'm out there. Um, I've been watching a lot of rugby, if that counts towards this, <laughs> um, learning from different things that I've seen on TV, Still, which is pretty it's nice. coaching development. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> um so yeah I've been watching a lot of rugby and just uh trying to take in everything that I can with the time that I have on my hands um other than that it's been pretty bland <laughs> pretty boring <laughs> how how has like I guess the reception and stuff um, doing some of these online programs and things been have there been like I guess you guys kind of mentioned that there was obviously I guess the, the like an issue with of the availability of Wi-Fi and stuff. So like how, like how many kids have you been able to uh, and like incorporate um, with some of these online uh, programs and classes? Um, so we're actually, the, the Zooms that we've been doing um, are through an indigenous health center in Brantford. So they do all of the, um, so basically they serve um, the urban indigenous population around Brant County. So the kids that have been joining and we get, I get about 20 kids per session. Um, they live in Brantford or in Brant County. So they do have great Wi-Fi. So 
that that's who's been who I've been doing the the workshops for and reaching out to for now. We're actually um, talking with the Ministry of Child and Youth Services, um, who does want us to deliver some of our workshops um, to some of the northern remote communities. Um, so that is going to be um, the same type of struggle, um, but we have to start somewhere. And actually, um, I guess it's as crazy as it sounds, Elon Musk has um, started offering Starlink, it's called um, internet services in the northern remote areas here in, in Ontario. So I guess um, some of these communities will start to be linked up to that. So hopefully that'll go well. Now, the Toronto Arrows have been uh, actively advertising the program. Uh, Bill Webb uh, has shown some of the mocks since you guys have made them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And they've and they've become sponsors for the team. Well, what does it mean to have uh, an MLR team in Canada's only national uh, national uh, professional team uh, be a sponsor and be a part of what you guys are trying to develop? I'll go. Um, it's a really cool experience, I think, for the athletes that participate with us. Uh, they're able to look up to people who are within their general neighborhood. They're from the same province. Um, and also have these athletes be recognized by people who play for the, um, the Arrows, which is very interesting. As well as just having the names come out. We had Tom Van Horn come out, like I said. Um, a lot of the Arrows have reached out and said they have interest in coming out and helping us out, um, sending us swag to give out to the kids that we have at camps and stuff. Um, it's really big for the kids in the sense that these stars are um, recognizing them and noticing them and these kids have somebody to look up to and say I met that guy I shook his hand or I got a picture with him or he signed my shirt kind of deal so I look at it from it's a great great opportunity for the kids that are participating with us. Yeah it's very similar my wife um, works for a company that does um, they bring curling to schools um, and uh, one of their programs that they ran is that they had some of the, the pros, uh, you know, come to schools or go to the ranks where they were running like kind of rookie rugby but curling kind of events. And, and it was a very similar situation. So it, 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 it sounds amazing that you've been able to have some of the arrows either donate their time or, or their swag to be able to kind of support what you guys are trying to do. Um, yeah, uh, they actually sponsored our brand new jerseys as well. The, our boys team jerseys actually Stu's wearing one. So you'll <laughs> see the Toronto Arrows logo on there. So that the, our, our boys haven't even been able to, um, try on their, their new, their new kits yet. So once they put that on, I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll be pretty excited about that. Yeah. Well, New kid always feels really good to put on. Um, or, uh, so probably especially too after oh, this. This, is, year. this has felt very good to put on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. It looks good on you too, Stu. You may Thanks. maybe you need a size bigger next time. Though. Looks good. Is uh, we, no, I, I'm. It's it's me deluding myself to think I'm still uh, in the shape to play it back. <laughs> so we we bought. You know, obviously I've got the shirt on, but we bought. Um, I bought I bought a headband for my wife and you know or um, a scrunchie. All right. And uh it's now become like a play toy for my daughter. It's not a scrunchie <laughs> anymore. It's uh it's a it's a it's a script for some of her dolls or it's a something that's <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah, it's I it's, love it. <laughs> it is what it is. I I'm happy somebody's using it, I guess. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. We appreciate every time anybody supports us. It's it's I'll get a notification on my phone from PayPal and I'll be like, Oh my God. And, and we do it all here. We do that. We print our own t-shirt. Um, we design all of our own kit. We have our own, uh, kit brand now. So, um, we, we're, we're having fun with the design portion of all of this anyway. We've been sending, um, a lot of our merch to the UK recently. We were on a, another podcast called blood and mud. Yeah, I don't know if you guys. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. No, I've heard of Blood oh, yeah. yeah. So they are oh, yeah. fun guys. They're very sweary. So that was pretty <laughs> cool. Um, but ever since we were on that, that podcast must be huge because we have got 
so many people that have bought merch from us just from listening to that. And, and it's still trickling down. It's been months and I'm still sending out uh, merch pretty much daily to all over the place, Ireland, UK, Japan, even like, so that's been really cool. What's the, is Japan like the furthest place that you've, uh, you've had to send something to, or is there like, I think so crazy locations. Japan, I guess, would be the furthest place so far. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always pretty funny. As soon as I get the notification, I'll be like, oh my God, we're sending it overseas. It's so cool. Yeah. So where do you guys see like the Iroquois Roots program kind of developing into the future? I mean, like five, 10 years, say maybe even further down the road than that as well. Um, so I think short term, my coaching goals would be to just reach as many of the 133 First Nations in Ontario, like we said, um, further developing uh, different age grades. So we're looking into doing more U14 based stuff as opposed to just sticking to U18 uh, so that we'll have people developing with us for years and hopefully playing with us for years as well. Uh, Long term, looking into, we kind of mentioned it before, but meeting different Indigenous people from across the world. We would love to connect with people, you know, in Australia and New Zealand. And um, we've looked into different communities just in the States. Um, So developing nationally as well as internationally, which is something that we definitely see happening in the long term. And so you said like part of your goal there is to get to all 133 First Nation communities in Ontario. So, like, how many have you reached so far? <laughs> Is it seven? I think it's seven. <laughs> uh, that's, it's that's it's great. a huge goal, but uh, like we said, well, we founded Roots Rugby at the end of 2017, so there was really nothing done that year, and so we had 2018 and 2019. We we took a huge focus on our U18 teams because we were going down to Florida, so um we didn't travel much then either but but definitely um it's not even just the the 133 first nations here in ontario like i i think both of us have said it would be huge for us to get into the remote northern first nations in ontario um remote meaning their fly-in communities only they're marginalized communities in that the area um they don't have a lot of access to the, the the luxuries we have here where we live um so it'll be definitely a culture shock for us um but we've been um you know obviously our our, our heart is with them um at the end of the day um we're all we're all indigenous people um so we'll have all of those similarities anyway um, but definitely, um, I, I don't know how much you guys know about the the northern remotes, but they have a lot of challenges there. Um, food security is one of them. They can't obviously grow food on permafrost. Um, so clean drinking water. Most of the First Nations in those communities don't have access to clean potable water, and that's um, a basic human right. So. Um, that's something that we need to advocate for as well. Um, you know, they have children, young, young children as not as young as nine years old that are taking their lives with suicide just because of the challenges they face socially in their communities. Um, so even though it's going to be, like I said, a culture shock for us to get there, I think those are the places that we need to get. Um, and so that's one of our huge goals, obviously, to travel there is going to be thousands of dollars per person for us to get there. So we're definitely going to need to um, get some funding to in order to, to even just get there. Um, but those are definitely, that's one of my goals for sure in this program is, you know, to reach these kids that need it the most, I think. So, you know, as uh, we're kind of getting to winding down here. Um, what can we or the listeners do to help support the Iroquois Roots program? 
Well, um, definitely. <laughs> um, always is to um, head to our online shop and pick up some awesome merch that um, it all, all the money that is made by merch goes back into funding our programs. We currently aren't funded in any type of way. Um, so we do a lot of fundraising. So if you ever see us, you know, knocking on everyone's door, selling tickets or raffles or anything, for sure, get in on that because we always have amazing prizes, first of all. <laughs> um, but but every dollar just goes into funding this program. Um, other ways to help, um, definitely we love getting kit from uh, national team players. It excites everybody. Um, so I have some Phil Mack jerseys. I have some Gislan jerseys, Brett Bukaboom. And we don't know what to do with them yet, but when we do, I think everybody in the Canadian rugby community is probably going to be excited and wanting to, to get a piece of that type of, of merchandise. So if any national players that are listening maybe um, want to help out that way, that's always a cool way to help us out. Um, and obviously share our social media like comment share um just share our story get it out there and hopefully at some point somebody cool will pick it up and be like hey we have some extra funding dollars like <laughs> we we, we want to help out a little bit so lisa the cloud is she ways. the is she the mpp that's in charge of uh <laughs> sports heritage and culture that sounds like something right at up her, her. wheelhouse <laughs> <laughs> yeah her, everyone, everyone that listens, please harass her about uh, providing yeah. support to this fantastic program. I like that idea. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, guys, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us and uh, and not not only talk about rugby, but talk about uh, a program that that's just doing so much good in our communities. You know, with everything that's been going on and you know we just had bell let's talk day this week it's more important now to 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 just be part of a community whether it be for fitness or for fun or just to be able to talk to like-minded people it's fantastic what you guys are doing for the youth of our our, of our sometimes most vulnerable in our, in our province especially which what you guys are wanting to do in the future well thanks so well, much thanks for, having for having us, us. <laughs> That was almost on sync. That was very good. Look at us go. We must be related. <laughs> now, where, where no, can we they... had fun. Thanks so much. Well, we appreciate that. Now, where, where can uh, our followers find you on social media? We have it all. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're just missing a Snapchat. But um, Facebook, we're Iroquois Roots Rugby. Instagram, we're at Iroquois Roots Rugby. And Twitter, we're at Roots Rugby. So search us, like us, give us follow, give us share. <laughs> and, and that's going to be it for, for this episode. We really appreciate it, guys. And uh, if you want to follow us, we are also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Lulu's Rugby, and also on YouTube. Uh, we post all of our videos there. So uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Melanie and Megan, for joining us. And I hope that everyone has a good night. Thanks, guys.